How many of us look in the mirror every day and all we see are the scars from the past or things we use to validate how unworthy we feel about the things we want? In this video, I'll talk about the uprooting of weeds in my mind that kept me from living a life of my dreams in hopes that you do the same. Let's get started. When I became an adult and I knew that my life and the trajectory of where I wanted things to go was my responsibility, I used to be in my mother's household so eager to spread my wings and fly and leave the nest, leave her supervision because I felt that her protection was a limitation at the time. And it was just my ego and the audacity of a child, really, without a speck of real life experience under my belt. I finally had to realize that she did such a good job at taking care of everything that I never really did see how hard life was. Isn't it so funny that the parent that has majority of the responsibility gets the most criticism and judgment and all of the pain that comes with letting a child go, you know? Taking care of our responsibilities as an adult is one thing, but adding your dreams on top of that felt like there was this weight of the world that I actually had to pay rent in on my shoulders, and then there was an entirely different world of my dreams that I couldn't even fathom trying to carry. But moving on, I felt that once I left my mom's house and I was on my own in this big world alone, that I was going to arrive to this place and some random person in a crowded room was going to see me and say, you, I'm going to make you a star. And then next thing you know, I'm in movies and I'm seeing all these people and I'm having all of these cool experiences and all of these things and it'll be great. And then years pass and the person that's supposed to change your life is never in those crowded rooms. And adulthood, to me, just felt like I was floating in space. And because I was just floating in space, I was susceptible to what happens when you're out there. I was hit, I was damaged, I experienced things that hurt me, I experienced people that hurt me, situations in my life that, as much as I didn't want to, changed me or maybe chipped away at my confidence a little bit made me different and so i was supposed to take everything that was thrown at me and wake up like spongebob every day and say i'm ready to conquer the life of my dreams i just didn't understand how it was obvious that i set unrealistic expectations for adulthood in my life and i think when you're young and you just don't know it's natural but one important thing that i realized that just because we set unrealistic expectations for adulthood and we actually experience it for ourselves to know what it is does not mean that we should forget our dreams along the way. We just need to find a practical and realistic approach to achieve those things. Anything can happen when you plan for it. And sometimes I think about the most diabolical things that have happened in this earth and on this planet alone and things that are still happening to this day and i realize that you know just because the intentions are not the best doesn't mean that there's just this limitation they plan for it to manifest like everything else so we have to do the same about the things that we want bottom line life started to change for me when i realized the person in the crowded room that i was looking to change my life was me and this is what i did to reinvent myself you know, kids are cruel. I can bet a lot of the things that we carry in our fanny pack of insecurities are words from children that we experienced when we were children. And those insecurities are real, so I want to validate the damage that they have caused. But I have this rule that after we validate something, we let it go. We did the work to pull it up. Now we have to do something with it. And I don't want to sound like too fresh or too forward because I know we're just like getting to know each other, but some of us are psychological hoarders. You're keeping every rotten tomato someone is throwing at you. And because of this collection of someone else's projections, lies, and just plain crap, you can hardly see yourself. For example, your man is trying to connect with you and calls you beautiful every day and you can't even be present with him and receive the love that he's trying to give you because you have a 13 year old kid in the back of your head that told you that he wasn't attracted to you 
And if we can actually remember correctly, that boy probably didn't even wash his ass that day. And I know you're like, well, how do I let it go? You know, I was bullied so many times. I started to believe it. I don't like the way I look when I open my eyes. I don't like the things that I've done in my past. You know, my parents were my bullies. So it's just a little bit different for me in my journey. And I want to say that, yes, like all of these things in our life are hard. You know, that's why we were kind of put here to experience these trials and move forward and make that a testimony of our strength. I think what happened for me, I was able to let it go and forgive when I realized there were situations in my past where someone needed to forgive me, where I was the shitty kid that misspoke out of pure ignorance that someone had to tell me of the damage that I caused them and I realized that we are all the same. We say things, we think things, we can be wrong. Sometimes we don't realize it, but we're judging and we make mistakes. And if there was anyone in this world that was putting themselves on pause for something that I have said or done to them, I want to tell you that I apologize. And also that I ain't shit to keep in the back of your mind for that long. And if someone brought your mistakes up, you would hope that they love themselves enough not to hold on to them. And we have to do the same. Sometimes we create entire identities centered around our insecurities that without highlighting them, we don't know who we are. It almost scares us to discover who we are because then we go back to the feeling of floating in space. And I've come to realize if space is just us starting from scratch, I'd rather prefer that Because what if in the darkness, that was the fertile soil that we needed to create an identity centered around what we loved about ourselves, not the things that we were forced to love because of the people around us inability to love it or see it as something of value. For example, if I had an insecurity about something in my life and I decided to become a stylist centered around my need and ability to love that version of myself, I become successful in doing that and I end up helping other people in doing so. And then I start to realize outside of helping others, and I understand the journey of how I got there, I'm still a damn good stylist and I want to help everybody. I want to help And I feel like I'm worthy of sharing myself with the world, not just the people that identify with my past insecurities and my pain. Although those people need a guiding light, once your purpose has been fulfilled in that sector, you start to realize that there's so much more in store. When we accept who we are, and allow our insecurities not to be the forefront of our decisions in our lives. But once we validate the things and let it go and we realize there's so much more at our fingertips because we've actually opened our hands to just seeing life in the way that we should or the way that the divine sees us. Because the divine doesn't see our insecurities, it just sees how it created us and there's an entire world open for us We just go after it in the fullness of who we are, not allowing our insecurities to be at the forefront in our minds when we do certain things. Like when I think about um, models, plus size models, or I remember Tyra Banks created like a series for like plus size models or someone made a series for plus size models. And I realized like I get in an industry that's as toxic as like the fashion industry sometimes love it, but you know. I understand that creating a platform for plus size models is a really great thing. But when I was looking at those women, like they were eating, they were bad, like they were amazing. And like, they were just great models, you know what I'm saying? And I saw them as just them developing a craft and there wasn't anything different that they needed to do as models because they were plus size. You know, at, at some point, people, we come in different shapes. We come with different things that make us different and unique. And we, if we put ourselves in boxes, if we allowed society to put us in these boxes and we put labels on ourselves because of it, it just kind of like, 
it just it's a limiting thing and I saw it I see it now and I realize that the insecurities that are holding me back are keeping away from an a huge ass world that is just ready to experience me I stopped carrying my shame I stopped viewing who I was as unworthy of a happy ending. And a lot of us walk around with guilt and flashbacks and dark times. And because of the judgment we put on ourselves for getting there in the first place, we live in this segregated mind. We say, I couldn't possibly own a business. I was terrible at math growing up. Numbers and the potential of messing up could scare me. I know if I build a platform, it won't work. Everyone hated me when I was growing up. I had a relationship with a married man when I was young and dumb, and because of the fear of it potentially happening to me because of my karma, I don't want those type of relationships. I don't want to be married. And we create these barriers of how far our lives can go because of things that have happened in our past. And I had to realize that this type of self-talk made me my own enemy. I was a loser before I ever even started. And a lot of us are claiming to fight the powers that be. But the truth is, there is no power that has the ability to create, control, and destroy like the power of our own mind. So remember, if we want to reinvent ourselves, you know that you have the power to reinvent yourselves as many times as you want. But it also comes with forgiving the past versions of yourself just as many times. The weight of who we used to be and the mistakes from our past are so heavy that in this next chapter of your life, I don't want you to carry a single thing. Hey, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching my videos, sharing your comments and everything that you have to say. You guys have no idea how much it is a dream to me to actually have people listen and resonate and feel something from what exists in my heart and in my mind. And it's just such um, a reassuring thing from the divine that I actually am authentically being myself and as different as I feel and as out of place as it feels in the time of me doing it. I know it's for a real purpose and if I am bringing any type of value into your life of the things that I'm sharing, thank you so much for being open to me and allowing me to reach parts of you that you probably never even experienced. It's all a part of my destiny and my plan so the fact that I'm starting off well and I'm doing okay and I'm saying things that resonate with you means the whole world to me. I almost want to cry, but I'm not going to do that. Thank you guys so much for just giving me a chance and watching my videos. And I'm super excited for the future videos that we will make and the conversations that we will have together. I hope that this video resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in my next one.